Hi, I'm Tim from the Daxter team. And today you'll learn how to change how you approach modeling your data to scale your data platform as your data sets grow. Now, writing data pipelines gets challenging as you start working with more and more data. You bump into issues such as dealing with long and expensive feedback loops to test your changes, hitting out of memory issues when loading all the data into memory, and managing storage and compute costs as your data platform scales. By partitioning your assets with Dagster, you create a path to scalable success. In this video, we'll talk about how to think in partitions and refactor your existing assets to leverage partitioning. As a quick refresher, assets are produced by our data pipelines, ranging from files and tables to reports and machine learning models. And to materialize an asset is to execute the necessary steps in a data pipeline to create that asset. And when it comes to data pipelines, to partition your data is to slice your data into chunks that they can be grouped by. For instance, sales data can be aggregated or separated by time-based dimensions like hour, week, or year. While your customer information can be partitioned by their country of residence, demographics, or any other bucket or category that you can segment your population in. Partitioning your data helps with those previously mentioned problems. It allows for more efficient testing by enabling individual partition testing before running changes across all of your partitions. Additionally, working with one partition at a time is less intensive on your compute engine. Let's see how we could refactor an existing asset to use partitions. All right, so let's take this existing asset here that reads in a CSV file of orders for an e-commerce store and writes it into DuckDB. Now, this isn't the most efficient way to do this. And part of it is because it tries reading in that entire CSV file into memory when it computes. And this is problematic because as the e-commerce store scales, that CSV file may turn into many CSV files in S3 or some absurdly large tables within an application database or Snowflake at some point. And so therefore, reading it into memory on a Kubernetes pod or a VM or wherever it won't last very long. So let's try refactoring it. What we are going to do is partition this by week. Therefore, only reading and ingesting a week's worth of orders at a time. Let's start by making the partition definition. In Dagster, we just import weekly partition definitions and we write it out. Weekly partitions equals weekly partitions definition. And conveniently, we've already added the start date and the prospective end date for when the orders stop. We can now start viewing this asset function as the computations required in order to make the partition given a partition key. And to get that partition key, we can access it directly from our context object that we get with every Dagster definition. Let's grab context.assetPartitionKey for output. This comes to us as a string. In this case, we know that this is a time-based partition, so it should give you back a date string representing the beginning of the week that this partition constitutes. And once we know what the partition key is, we can now selectively read in data based off of that. Let's take out this pd.readcsv line now because we don't want to read in the entire thing anymore. And now we are going to use DuckDB to filter the data as we inserted it. So rather than trying to read in that data frame, we now want to try reading orders path where the order dates week lines up with our partition key. Once you save those changes, let's go on over to our Dagster UI and try executing it. You'll see our orders asset that is now partitioned right here in the asset graph. Let's go ahead and click materialize selected. And you get this great little modal that asks you which partitions you'd like to materialize. In this case, let's just do the first two weeks of that year. Then we'll launch the backfill and then we can see how many partitions are targeted 
what assets are going to be backfilled and their current status. Now let's give it a few seconds in order for this backfill to happen and check back in afterwards. All right, and now we're back and we'll see that these two partitions successfully completed. And if we click into the orders asset, you'll get the partitions tab. You'll be able to see which partitions have been built or materialized and which ones have not been materialized yet. Once you're done making changes to an individual partition, you'll want to backfill the rest of your partitions. To backfill is to materialize old or non-existent partitions, often due to code changes or updates in historical data. Dagster offers a user-friendly interface for backfilling data. In the UI, you can see what partitions have never been materialized before, have recently failed, and which ones have succeeded. In the Dagster framework, how Dagster builds multiple partitions is defined by an asset's backfill policy. By default, you kick off multiple runs to parallelize filling your partitions. This is helpful if you have discrete categories independent of each other, such as a run per geographic region. On the other hand, you may want to kick off a single run and fill in an entire range of partitions in one go such as recomputing your rolling average metrics for each week over the past year. In this case, you may want to use a single run backfill policy. By specifying that your asset uses a single run backfill policy, you get a separate set of APIs that tell you the range of your backfill, letting you know the range for continuous partitions like time in this video, you learned how to think in partitions by learning what a partition is, how to partition your asset, and configure how your asset is backfilled. This is just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with partitions. To learn more, such as how to have partitions depend on other partitions, come check out our documentation. All right, take care, have a great day.